So these could be your metadata records, these could be your code books, could be your lab notebooks, things like that. But um, essentially these are just things like Microsoft Word, text files, PDFs, things like that. I'm going to try to go through this as fast because you guys know what a text file is. Um, numerical is probably what you all work with the most. Um, it's when you think of data, you know, you think of that spreadsheet with variables here and observations here and all your information in the middle. Um, but this is where I wanted to ask, what kind of statistics software packages do you all use? Who uses R? Yeah, cool kids. What about, what else do you all use? You don't use Stata, that's Econ. MATLAB. A Minitab. What's that? Minitab. What's it called? Minitab. Anybody else use that? Okay. All these are different, right? Um, and uh, your most basic is Microsoft Excel, or your CSV file, things like that. Numerical data. Next is multimedia. I actually, to my delight, heard uh, you all discussing images as part of your project and how that is in itself is data. Well, that's true. You take pictures of lots of things. It's not feasible to store a sample, a physical sample, forever. You can't. We don't have enough storage space. Um, so you take a picture of it, and people study the pictures. Um, so pictures in themselves are data, or a video of an interview transcript. Or maybe, in order to capture your methodology, maybe you guys recorded an entire cruise as a video. And you're like, well, you want to see how we capture stuff? Watch the video. Actually, people do that. There's video science journals out now where they explain <coughs> methodologies via video. So instead of depositing an article, you deposit a video that discusses a research methodology. methodology. The next is model data. So we discussed simulation data earlier. Um, and there's two types of models here. There's the model like building a car, and then there's a model like a simulation. So a 3D model of, say um, someone took, someone scanned my brain, right, to see if it works normally. And um, what they did is, when they scanned my brain, they put it into a CAD file, and they fed that into a 3D printer, and printed the image of my brain, right? So, and you printed it, and you study that. You can see the wrinkles or all little things in it. That is your research object. Is that 3D image of my brain that you, that you printed out? So when I talk about models, that's one way of talking about a model. But what most of you are used to are like statistical models or like college models. You know, things that feed in observational data or experimental data, spits the information out. So model data which could, is usually like information about your model parameters and things like that, like we discussed earlier. And in software, um, the first is, uh, some of you actually create software as, how many of you create software as part of your research project or product? So the software you create is the actual product. Um, I went to, a, a, how many of you heard of the DC Consortium? Probably not a lot of folks from the States. It's a group of marine biologists, oceanographers, and meteorologists and other folks in the sciences that study the effects of the Gulf oil spill. Um, and I went to one of their talks, and a member of their project team was a computer scientist, and he built a GIS program um, that kind of rivals our GIS, but it sort of does specifically what they needed to do. That was his product. He built a GIS software package that helped them, that they, you know, they could look at remotely and take out and do stuff. So that, that was his research product. But for most of you, the software, the things you're using, it's going to be code. So um, a lot of folks, sorry for leaning on the GIS examples, but that's kind of my background, so that's what I know. Um, a lot of folks, they can't, you know, whatever comes in the package of your statistical software program, it doesn't work. Um, if you want to run simple regression or do something like that, you're fine. But what I notice with a lot of GIS programmers, I know programmers who don't program in ArcGIS, they program in QGIS because it has a Python backend and they write all their own scripts in Python. So whatever they need GIS to do, they just make it happen. Um, and so when you look at, his name's Dr. David Fultz, he's a, he's a friend of mine, he works in the geography department at FSU. That's what he is, he's kind of a, he's, he's the wild west of GIS. Everything's open source, he writes his own scripts, he does his own work, um, and as a result, you're not gonna understand anything that David does unless you look at the scripts that he puts into the uh, program itself. And if you ever want to reproduce his research, you're going to have to use his scripts. How many of you all heard of GitHub? He puts all his stuff on GitHub. So if you need his code, he sends you out there, and you can fork it and do whatever you need to do with it. How many of you write code? A few of you? I try. I'm not good at it, though. It requires a very special brain. 
And so other types of research data. I just kind of want to make you aware of other types. And I actually printed the descriptions of all these things because they're pretty cool. So let me read them to you. So discipline civic. Does anyone know what a gravity core is? It's how you sample and study sediment layers at the bottom of lakes or oceans. What about a uh, marine magnometer for that? It's how you detect variations in the total magnetic field underneath of the sea. See, I'm learning too. <laughs> the acoustic Doppler current profiler measures the velocity of currents. Wait, people knew about that? It's nice. What about the uh, ocean bottom size, that thing? The bottom. You guys use that? What's it do? <coughs> I wrote it. It uh, measures the movement of the Earth's crust um, under the ground, or under the water. So right, all these very specific things that only you know about. I don't because I copy and pasted definitions from this website so I can learn about it for the talk. Um, but you know what the output of that data looks like. Some of you. And it might, you know, there might be specific data outputs that come from those instruments that can't be read in any other thing ever. How many of you work with stuff like that? The file formats that you push out of your instruments or your tools, they really can't be read. It's not just a PDF you can, or it's not just a JPEG image you can look at. It's not going to spit out an easy spreadsheet for you to understand. It's very specific to your field. Few of you. Uh oh, wrong thing. Back to the beginning of my notes. So there's lots of data types like that out there. All of those are some other data type, but I just wanted you to kind of be aware that you all are going to work with your own information. And a lot of times when you describe that data, you want to describe it in a way, imagine you're talking to Renee about your data. He doesn't know what it is. So you have to describe what all these tools do and what the output looks like and what the formats look like. So those are your data types, really quickly. You've got text, numerical, multimedia, model, software, other. So what I want to do, I want to talk to you a little bit about proprietary and non-proprietary file forms. Again, something that's going to be covered in a lot more detail later on in the course. But I want you to think about it because, you know, we've been writing research data types. Soon I'm going to ask you guys to attach file formats for the data types you created. And I want to challenge you to think about saving things in a non-proprietary format. So um, let me get down to the bottom of my notes. Whenever I press the right arrow button, all the way at the top. So right, proprietary file formats can only be read in commercial software. So um, MATLAB, it's not free. Um, does that, does that, the output, what is the file extension on a MATLAB uh, file? Doc What's that? Doc can, can I plug that into Excel or R or Word and read that? Why not? It's probably, it's probably useless unless you have MATLAB. Um, and so a lot of your files, they're going to be proprietary. There's nothing you can do about that. But what I want to challenge you to think about are, can you make them readable in freely available software? Um, so various basic examples, Excel files, XLS, state of files, I forgot, SPSS, that's what I used to use in grad school. They all have very specific file formats that can't be read on the programs. Um, but CSV is not proprietary. I can download a random spreadsheet um, thing on the web for free, anything, and I can read your spreadsheet. I can go to Google Sheets. I can look at your information without having to buy any additional piece of software. Same thing with R. Um, not to be too much of an R champion, but everything's open. And, and R has packages installed in it that convert any data to any format. So if you save it in R, you're good to go. It must be 12 o'clock. Yes. And same thing with Word. You know, a doc doc can easily be replaced as a PDF. Or as ugly as it might look, put it in text files. So if I was taking field notes on a typewriter or a typewriter or a laptop, well maybe I would just do it in a note file or a notepad that you get for free on your computer. Because then when I want to deposit it later down the road, I know that anybody can read that file. You don't have to have Microsoft Word to read my notes. And so I want you to challenge yourself to think about the data that you produce as part of your project and whether or not you can or can't make it uh, uh, non-proprietary. It's going to be cases where you can't. But it's something to consider. So maybe you'll make the final version. Um, you make the final version in an open format or something like that. So I always like to save PDFs of my final versions of documents I create because it's an open file format. The reason I develop these slides in Google Slides and not PowerPoint. Anybody who wants the slides doesn't require a slideshow viewer to do it. All they need is a web browser 
and a link that you can get the information to. I did make slides for you all though too. Does that make sense? Proprietary and non-proprietary file formats? So we're gonna do one more exercise today, I believe. Yeah. And uh, it shouldn't take really long because you all have lists of data that you've produced. So I'm only gonna give you a couple minutes and um, you can work together in groups and talk amongst yourselves, but attach, uh, attach formats to that. So actually write it out, um, what you think the formats of your data will be, and then consider, for anything that's proprietary, consider whether you can or cannot make it uh, non-proprietary. And we're only gonna give you probably like two or three minutes for this because you're already well on your way. And then um, let's spend the last part of the class explain to you why all this makes sense and it's worth your time to learn. Fair?